What's up, everyone? Welcome. Welcome to Planet Xbox Weapon Wheel Edition, Episode 2. Uh, we're back here on a Saturday. I am your host, Best Spot Kid Smooth, with my co-host, Lord Attic, a.k.a. Gaming Attic, ILP. What is up? What's going on, guys? Uh, we, we have a, a pretty subtitle show about you. You know, we got a little... We we got a little we got a lot of Xbox and like little little tiny splash of PlayStation for this because uh we know a lot of you want to hear about that. So. Yes, um yeah a lot a couple things happened uh uh this week you know we had the you know the highly anticipated showcase um which you know it came and went and you know the internet's been on fire ever since then but uh, and for all the wrong reasons for all the wrong reasons absolutely um. Before we get into the show, um, I do want to make sure I go over a question from um, uh, Patreon last week. Remember, Plant Xbox uh, is now, you know, a part of uh, the Weapon Wheel Patreon. Um, please subscribe, join, you get exclusive first access to the podcast along with Weapon Wheel After Dark. And there you can ask your questions that we will answer um, each uh, week. And uh, this time around, I think we got a question that came in late um, last week, I believe. Give me uh, just one quick second. I, th I think this might have came from. Oh, man, I'm so sorry. I have to get to these. Uh... You slack and smooth. I forgot where he. Uh... I just had oh there we go there we go there we go there we go all right it came from hustle and motivate uh the question is well it, he says great to see you and attic as a duo you guys are awesome my question is what xbox franchise would you recommend to a casual gamer like myself keep up the great work y'all what would you recommend attic? Uh, i'd probably say gears I, th I feel like gears has a story that's easy for most people to uh you know relate to and get close to i feel like they have a lot of good ups and downs w what i like about stories is that they're not scared to kill people i feel like there's too much we put our people in the most crazy situation and they always come out on top and and gears generally feels like a war like like at any time they would kill people that you love and you know, I, I feel like Gears is a good one because I feel like Halo is good too. Like Microsoft's got a decent amount of like casual friendly games, but I feel like there's a lot of skill gap when it comes to Halo and, and Gears. But as far as like a single player, those are probably the games that's easiest for a casual to jump into. Um. So now Hustle, he says a casual gamer like himself. So I don't know if this is a question for for him or he's just in, speaking in general because I know. Um, Hustle generally plays Gears of War. He's 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 no stranger to Gears of War. So the, Gears of War is um, I feel like is a nice one, but I don't consider Gears a casual game because like I would consider the single player casual, not the multiplayer. Okay, I'm about to say because that multiplayer there's a skill gap to the point because I can only last so long on Gears of War multiplayer before it becomes unplayable to me. And not saying that it's bad to the point where I can't really. You know, have like after a while, I stop having fun with it. I once I hit to a certain level in rank, I stop having fun with it because I'm not as good as that next tier of Gears of War players. Uh, because it's brutal. Um, I, I I still haven't mastered the the little wall bounce jump in wall bounce shotgun um, uh, fight. It just it just never happens. It's like my hands on it. I just stop like zooming in. I just hit fire, hit fire, and hopefully somebody just lands into my firing range. Whereas uh, a, 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 a like a, a one hit kill. Otherwise, or, or you do what you you did when uh, I think it was hard at you play where you didn't even cover. You guys literally <laughs> you was just shooting out of cover like in a cover shooter. <laughs> you was shooting out of cover. Yeah. So yeah, and gears is will always be one of my favorite games um so for if i'm going to answer this question for hustle um to a casual person i just want to play uh you know games but want to play on xbox and if it had to be an xbox based game i actually i think i 
realistically, uh, no, no. I think Sea of Thieves requires skill. Yeah, yeah, and some sort of uh, you have to have some sort of knowledge, some common sense. And I think um, you have to have a friend that actually knows yeah. the game to be able to really captivate on it. I think Halo is more social than Gears because you don't have to. There's a lot you can do in Halo without you know feeling like you're actually. You know what? We we looking at this all the wrong way. Yeah. Their most casual game is Minecraft by far. Yeah, but I... okay. Okay, but I don't like Minecraft whatsoever. I hate it. I would never that, recommend that's Rocket League. the wrong way. I would never recommend Rocket League. We want to play. Yeah, he yeah. Said, but, uh, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm uh, go easy. Uh, it's still gonna be one of the big three. It's gonna be Forza Horizon series. Any of the Forza Horizon games, probably the easiest game to get into. They're pretty. Uh, they have good music. Uh, the graphics are good. The gameplay is fun. And yeah, you, you can't go wrong. You you could know, play competitively, or you just literally play by yourself and still have hours of upon hours of content um to explore so forza horizon for sure would be my uh recommendation uh man question for you attic man i haven't been playing a lot of games lately um and um i'm not exactly sure why um i'm trying to think of like some of the, the last game i think the last game i've completed was ravenlock um what have you been playing lately pretty much exclusively zelda at this point i've played so much zelda it's unreal um i'm actually a little upset with nintendo for uh fixing the dupe glitch <laughs> i i understand that you know it was taking advantage and exploiting the system mm -hmm. but to me the thing that makes Bre uh tears of kingdom different than breath of the wild is like the building and you need those you need those cells to do it. And what I liked about the duping is I could dupe the material that I could just summon more like something else and, and fly it around or something. And now that that's gone, I got to grind the material. It's kind of like Zodiac stones or something like that. Uh, and I got to grind that material to summon, you know, machines to fly around and do stuff with. And I just don't like that. It's just like that dupe glitch wasn't hurting no one. It's like they're like one of the only studios I've ever known in a single player experience game mm -hmm. like that to fix something that's not bothering anyone. Like you have to do things in a certain way to dupe stuff. So it's like you you you've anything actually probably just hurt your game more than help it cuz I'm going to be real with you. I'm it's taking a lot in me to even play the game anymore. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, cuz it's like it's it, it's just like I, I was upgrading the deity armor mm -hmm. and, and I'm sitting here and you got to sit on these dragons mm -hmm. uh, or you got to search them out. And after you get one, I just dupe the rest. I can give a fuck. I was, I'm just dupe it. But now they're getting me to the point where I got to sit on these dragons. Sure. I here's here. Here's here. I, here's how I look about when it comes to exploiting something. Yep. If the only thing that is saving me is time, I'm a hundred percent down to exploit it. If the only if I'm not if I made like a weapon that's not in the game from exploits, that's different. But if I'm just saving me time and I'm not and I actually go grind some of these parts, because all that's doing is what I gotta wait for a blood moon. Then I gotta go kill them. Like that's the only thing they're doing is saving me time. So why does Nintendo care that I might not play your game for five hundred hours when you already got my money? I mean that's that's fair. Um I don't understand the point if there's like the thing I don't understand about the point of fixing something like that is that it's not like an online based game. There's there's nothing to, you know, win or take advantage of of like against other players um, is essentially a time saver. Right. Um, I have it. Hell, if you if you're Ubisoft, Ubisoft charges you for time savers if they exist. But um but yeah i i i don't think it was a it's a now i'm not playing you know tears of the kingdom or breath of the wild anything like that but um i can understand why you're upset single player game it's a it's a pretty much a self-serving uh glitch and i don't see why they would need to uh to to patch something like that out of the game uh, for me, I'm I'm very pro time savers. Like if you if 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 single if bloated single player games 
had uh, options to buy myself to reduce that time by just giving me gear um, and upgrades available, I'd buy it straight up. Don't care. I'd buy it. I probably wouldn't buy it, but it's like they, there's so many duplicate glitches that's been in so many of these type of games that I couldn't tell you any one of them that fixed it. But anyway, we, we can move on from Zelda because uh, we, we, we got so much to talk about. All right, you made a video. Um, I'm going to say, I think earlier, la- earlier this week or late last week about yep. um, Xbox losing a bidding war to PlayStation over Square Enix games. Can you explain this? Because I find it hard to, I find it hard to believe that Xbox lost a bidding war. To, to PlayStation over Square Enix game. I don't necessarily think that Xbox lost anything. Mm-hmm. I think that when it was, it was like one of those situations where it's like, you know, we're, we're developing this game. What can you offer us? Um, Sony's offering us this mm-hmm. and we feel like we would sell less on your platform. And I think Sony was probably offering money for exclusivity. So it's mm-hmm. like, if, place if xbox with the you know the less what's the word i'm looking for uh not the the less install base Mm -hmm. um, for the most part of xbox people don't really necessarily buy games in that genre as much as playstation install base so if you're going to someone and you're saying look playstation's offered us x amount of money for timed exclusivity uh, so you're going to have to either give us what they offered us on top of more to make it a multi-plat, which PlayStation is not going to give us that money unless you don't get it, which I don't know if that happened, or it's we're talking about timed exclusivity money, and since you want the game, it's going to have to be a timed exclusivity kind of thing. So either you pay double what PlayStation paid, or we'll go give the money to PlayStation and still make money on top of what their install base does because you you got to consider the fact that if xbox i don't think xbox can just go to a studio and say yo we know you paid money to we know playstation is trying to pay you money to keep this game off our platform we're gonna pay you that just to put it on our platform because then i feel like you're gonna have a lot of incidences that you see now with with these japanese games that i personally feel like is being held ransom to go on game pass for a game pass bag you're going to see that a lot more where you're not paying to have something put on game pass you're paying just to have it on your platform and and i think that is probably what's going on here microsoft is going to have to either pay a substantial amount of more money than what sony's paying because their install base is smaller and the people that buy those games aren't necessarily on the xbox ecosystem or you're gonna have to let it go and let PlayStation have it. Yeah, um, practices like that are why certain businesses just go out of business. Um, and I think say their names. Uh, yeah, if Square Enix is practicing like that, they should just go out of business. If PlayStation ain't gonna buy them, you know, uh, maybe Nintendo can buy them, somebody like that. But they need to go out of business if you're practicing. If you're relying on it, you're pretty much you're. It's anti-competitive. It's anti-consumer as, as well, what they're doing. I'm assuming, let's say if I'm not putting the blame on PlayStation, right? If you're going to say, oh, PlayStation offered us a, a better deal. If PlayStation offered you a better deal, it's because Xbox didn't offer you a deal at all. You're making a, a, a regular video game. You're making a multi-platform game. And you are pretty much choosing. I bet the game doesn't cost money to be. PlayStation doesn't have to play, uh, pay for the game to exist on PlayStation. They probably have to pay for it to be an an exclusive. They probably have to, uh, you know, pay for the marketing rights. Um, But at that time, when you're paying for marketing rights, you're just like, are you actually buying marketing rights or are you just buying the ability to to market the game, to advertise you're covering the the marketing costs? Um, I think the whole bidding world, I feel like Xbox probably never really had an option or knew that there was a, a bid for this game. They, I think PlayStation says, you know, we'll make this exclusive and then play, and the Square Enix took whatever offer PlayStation give them. They didn't give Xbox an option. And Square Enix is, like I said, one of the worst publishers of, of a rare kind. And 
their practices, it should get them out of business. What's, what needs to happen is that um, for every game that isn't a Final Fantasy game, for Square Enix need to flop, in which will they will. And these games that aren't Final Fantasy and they are exclusive to PlayStation or they are exclusive to like only PlayStation and Nintendo or whatever, they need to flop because those games flop. They're then they're pretty much just saying, you know what, you know that will either fix them to just make regular games, or at, at, at this point, it's closed down or or hopefully PlayStation PlayStation buys you for the cheap. I stopped messing. A lot of people think I stopped messing with Square Enix because they don't make Xbox uh, games. I stopped messing with Square Enix because they sold the only part of their publishing that I actually consistently enjoyed. I enjoyed the stuff that Crystal Dynamics did, enjoyed the stuff that uh, Adios Montreal did, and I enjoyed their IPs. They got rid of not only just the studios, but they got rid of their IPs. So it's like, okay, I have no use. I'm no, I'm no longer a customer to Square Enix. And now they're 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 focusing on you know their their Japanese division to provide all the games and all that other stuff. And they're get growing closer and closer with PlayStation, and they're not putting out games on Xbox. It doesn't really help me. I don't want your your C tiered games on Xbox. You know what I mean. So Final Fantasy isn't a a, a deterrent for Xbox users. The the Final Fantasy that they're making looks like a regular platinum game. It, it's gra- it graphically it looks good and it has a bunch of uh, uh, sparks and numbers and particles on screen. That's all. It doesn't look like a oh this is a unapproachable Japanese game. It looks like a regular action game. You know what I mean? That's all it looks like. It looks like something anything Capcom can make. So what you're saying is like you feel like to your opinion, what made Square Enix special, they no longer do. They're making games more like average like like a you know, Devil May Cry. Mm-hmm. I, I can feel you on that. I, I do feel like a lot of the special things that they did, they still do, but it's not their bigger titles. Like triangle strategy Mm -hmm. bravery default i'm pretty sure that's it you know i'm a fan of turn-based combat yeah and i look at something like final fantasy 16 i get very nervous because i'm seeing similar trends that i saw in final fantasy 15 where it seems like the game is being revolved around more on the summons and not the world and the actual individual characters now obviously they got like some some kind of like naruto thing going where they have the summons in them like I can't remember the actual name for them, but uh, in Final Fantasy 16, like there's people in the world that have these summons in their bodies, and they fight with them as part of them. And they kind they kind of did something like that in in 13, where you could actually combine yourself with your summon mm-hmm. in, in a way in a weird way. So I feel you on that. I do think this is something that they need to to pursue more because here's the thing, like. Just because, like, you don't necessarily like this type of genre, there's a lot of people that do. Mm-hmm. And that's why, you know, jump into it a little bit more, it's been highly rumored for a while now, and I've been told that, you know, Persona 6 is going to be an exclusive to PlayStation. Mm-hmm. To me, Smooth, how can you realistically build a fan base on an ecosystem when they don't get the games? How can you build a fan base when that fan base doesn't feel comfortable owning the system for that type of game? When you're not getting the bigger titles such as Final Fantasy and, and up till now Dragon Quest, which mm-hmm. it's up in the air if we get the next Dragon Quest. But it's you don't get these games. So where do you think the fans of these games are going to go? playstation off Mm -hmm. the default now sure the final fantasy fan base might not be a huge fan base which is probably pretty significant the dragon quest fan base might not be a huge fan base and the persona fan base not might be a huge fan but when you start putting these communities together we're talking about millions of people yeah and there's a lot of these people that love xbox and they play the xbox ecosystem that would probably buy your console if they felt comfortable and confident that these games aren't going to skip your platform. Why is Mega Man, Battle Network, 
only on PlayStation. Please, someone just YouTube that video for me real quick. That game That's does that, not that little eight like, bit one. Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's one of those things where it's like, okay, I personally do feel like Persona Six will come to Xbox. Mm. There was a time where Persona Five was just floating in the air, no timed exclusivity, mm -hmm. but there wasn't a lot of attempt on Xbox's part. I do feel like that's changed. Yeah, I feel like Xbox is going to be more aggressive and getting these type of games on their platform. So when that timed exclusivity is up, I'm confident it's coming over to Xbox. I but my qu huh? No, go ahead, go ahead, my bad. But my question to you is, do you think the best way for them to grow in this, in this ecosystem and this set of fans is to have their own, t to have their own exclusives? Because that's how PlayStation's done it for years. There's a reason they went after Final Fantasy VII Remake, Rebirth. They went after the Persona 5, the Persona 6. Because these games sell well for their install base, and they bring value to your console. So like uh, companies like Mistwalker, reach out to them. Say, yo, we would like you to consult on another studio that we're going to hire to remake Lost Odyssey from the ground up. Yeah. Until, until they have these type of games exclusive to their platform, and it's not going to be something that's overnight, but the thing is, is are we just never going to address it? And people say stuff like, Addict, you know, these games don't sell well on play uh, on Xbox, so that's why they skipped them. That is not an excuse, yeah. That is just an underlying thing that people keep saying that make the situation worse. If you never try to address it, it's never going to get fixed with that kind of mentality. No one was buying Xboxes during the Xbox One generation, they should have just packed up shop. Mm -hmm. They didn't, they kept fighting. You're going to have to do better in that market, and you're going to have to have stuff that's not just in Game Pass, but only on your platform to make people choose between, okay, I got uh, I got a PlayStation. I don't really want to mess with the PC too much. I'm going to buy an Xbox because I want to play Lost Odyssey Remake and Blue Dragon Remake. Okay. Um. Yeah, Xbox needs to. They need to. They need an internal studio, an internal Japanese studio. They need. That's what they need. You need a couple of them um, to want to start getting consistent, exclusive, um, in that market that can just cover Xbox and PC. Um, I mean, even for Game Pass, you gotta have those games. Yeah, like, and, but the thing is, they I'm, they made you no know, realist good moves in the past that improved them like. Uh, you know, they've gotten real close with Bandai Namco, who's been supportive of Xbox and, and, and Sega. Uh, Capcom is obviously supporting them with some games. There, there's some games they're willing to take or you know, a risk with. But this is the one of the reasons why I don't believe uh, Persona 6 would be timed exclusive to anything because Xbox worked too hard to literally but get see, the whole back catalog there to have some and for them to launch into Game Pass and get the Xbox versions of like the last two Persona games. Actually, the last three that they release are the only ones that are enhanced to any um, I, degree. So um, it, it, would, it wouldn't make sense to like, all right, you finally get these games in your servers. They come day and date on your um on uh to game pass uh they persona has been on i think xbox had an xbox presence over the last persona two years been on there for a minute at this point yeah so at this point it just like i think and last i checked they didn't show no persona 6 at this uh the the playstation showcase so if it'd be it crazy if it shows up on the xbox and if it show. like that and that's honestly just to be real with you See, that's what i expect I don't expect it to be exclusive, but I do expect it to show up because so they can break the mold. Like, all right, this is no longer a niche exclusive. This is going to be something Question. that we get consistently. If it, if it shows up at the showcase, mm -hmm. is it going to have that Game Pass marker on it? Uh, yes. That would be big. That would mm -hmm. be huge if they can get... Look, I still believe that some games you go for that exclusivity. You go for that double punch. You knock PlayStation the hell out. Uh, but obviously, that's not realistic yeah. to a lot of scenarios. 
you know, it's probably easier to go to these companies like, you know, we're not going to pay for a Times exclusivity or full-blown exclusivity. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you this big-ass bag. Just make sure it's on our service day one. Because in a lot of ways, it hits the same way. But to me, there's no better value to a platform than it's only on our shit. Yeah. I think because Xbox is in a position, they're in a better position than uh, than they think they are because that that is more profitable for developers reason why you don't go the exclusive route right because it's, it's going to be more expensive it's going to be more expensive to be an a exclusive and and in game pass so you know what i mean and it's hard to make a game xbox exclusive they'll, they'll and not be in game pass them. they'll pretty much have to pay them what the company projects the, the game, entire entire game yeah. to sell yeah yeah and at that point, it's not worth it. So the thing is, what you do is you... you That's you, why I don't think you do it with everything. But there are it. certain games, like maybe Persona 6, where mm -hmm. I personally feel like PlayStation secured that a long time ago, probably when Persona 5 was concluded in development. That's why I do think it is going to be a PlayStation exclusive. I hope I'm wrong. Gee, oh my God, I hope I'm wrong. How long but ago do you think Xbox uh, 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 got Persona... Uh, Persona um, the, this, these Persona bids? How long do you think they achieve that to get those games ported. Oh, let me see when persona 5 came out i think the the, the game started to release in 2022 and 2023 2016 so. is when persona mm -hmm. 5 the initial one launched because they didn't have the whole studio making royale so i i feel like 16 is a long time smooth if they when do you, how long ago did you think they got the to get the secure those uh games because you gotta think about three of them are ports i don't think those games were initially no, ever going to get ported I, no, I think it's when persona 5 finished sony already talked to them and secured persona 6. but you gotta think about it. it's 2023 so you think they you talked to them in like a 10 years in advance yeah it, it, especially it, if they're helping paying for the development process you, think you would talk to them during that development because literally we just talked about a story where Square Enix said they reach out to them in early production, so they would have reached out to them then. But my thing is, in the early production of uh, Persona Six, isn't it possible that this could have been the time that Xbox has been talking to Sega and Atlas about just... getting the previous game and therefore getting them a head start to make sure that they don't lose out on their next game? I just feel like it's very unlikely that PlayStation didn't secure that in writing because it, I mean, we're, we're seeing this like big push on Xbox, like 18, 19, mm -hmm. when it comes to Sega games, like the mm -hmm. Yakuza's, um, you know, we've seen some yep. of the Yakuza, the, the whole other... entire series, right? There's no, there's not going to be another yeah, Yakuza I don't, game. None that's of them have left either. I don't think yeah, they've and left they either. haven't made a, uh, there's not going to be another one. You got to think about it. Like a dragon. No, there's like not going to be a... have just left. There's not going to be another Yakuza game exclusive to PlayStation at this rate. It's, it's now and it, now it's an expectation for the for it to be on Xbox. It's not an expectation for it to be on Game Pass, but it is an expectation for it to be on um, Xbox. They've done enough marketing, enough talking, enough partnerships to make sure that all right, you know, this is something we can expect. And I feel like, um, and, and this is all Sega, right? This is all Sega. And if Xbox is, you know, I, I know they're always linked and rumored to buy. Uh, Sega, I just don't think, I don't see a situation where Persona 6 is being exclusive to, like, anything. If, if, if Persona 6 is coming out in the next two years, I think, A, we would have seen it already as far as, in, like, some sort of an announcement. You're right. Um, but, but, you know what I mean? That's the only thing. If it's coming out in the next two years, um, we would have seen it already. And if, it, and if it is coming out in the next two years already uh, and we haven't seen it, I think it's the reason for that. And that's because I think we're going to see it uh, at the Xbox so, showcase. <laughs> Persona 5 reveal looked like it was in 2014. All right. So about came like, out in 2016. So two years. Hey, all right. So if it's coming out within two years, you, you would, one would expect that it's going to show up at minimum at a Tokyo game show. So, I mean, we, Maximum. here's the, here, I don't, even if Persona 6 is on PlayStation only, mm -hmm. it's like I said, the moment that time to exclusivity is up, I, I have every, Every curry, every thought process that it's coming out for Xbox. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I want to point out more is like, you look at the Persona 3 remake rumored. Mm -hmm. Like, I haven't heard one thing saying that's a PlayStation exclusive. So, so I do think even if 6 was snatched early in development, Microsoft has put up that gate. 
they're like, you're not hitting us here. You're not hitting us here. We're going to put guards on this corner, guards on that corner. We're going to put a tank here. Score Enix's gate's been b- blown up. Like, they can't do nothing about yeah. that one. But they're like, we understand we're going to miss Square Enix games. Mm-hmm. We got to tighten up the leash around everyone else. And I do see that. You know, besides little things like Mega Man, uh, you know, I think that is an example of Capcom looking over there at Game Pass and saying, I wonder how much money we can get from them in the future. Wouldn't be surprised if an Xbox port's already been made. Yeah. They're just like, yeah, they're trying how to much get... can you give me mm-hmm. for this Game Pass bag in six months? Yeah. They did that with, uh, I think, because remember, we uh, Xbox had Streets of Rage 4, you know, day one. So, uh, like, those classic, and they also had Ninja Turtles. So there's clearly a market or a want uh, to do that. There's an opportunity to do that, to gain a bit of extra back. Because Mega Man ain't selling shit, even though it's, I think it, it, they shoot themselves in the foot by doing that. Um, by, like, you know what, we're not going to put it on Xbox, period, until they offer us a Game Pass bag because they offer Streets of Rage a Game Pass bag. They offer the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game a Game Pass bag. Um, I think uh, Persona 3, like I said, if, if, if Persona 3 Remake isn't, you know, if that's going to premiere on an Xbox showcase, you know what I mean? Like I said, I, I wouldn't be surprised. If that would we be like a, it, Even if they just had the marketing rights yeah. and they had nothing else, I, even no Game Pass bag. I, that would be big just to have Persona 6 marketed on the Xbox platform. Um, I, th- I think X- Xbox, w- what should happen if Xbox want to make a splash, right? What they do is you reveal Persona 3 remake and a remake is probably close sooner than later, right? And then you, you hit them with that, oh yeah, but uh, you know, a little logo teaser of Persona 6. And it's coming to Xbox. All we need to know is that it's coming to Xbox. They don't even got to promise the Game Pass thing. You don't think that would be big? I think Game Pass would be huge, but I don't know if that's realistic. What to get? To, you know, they what? Get what Persona Six in Game Pass? Like they? No, 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 no. Not in Game Pass. But this is what I think it realistically can happen. Now I'm just I'm no pipe dream. I think Xbox reveals Persona Three Remake, right? I think that's revealed with Xbox. And I think, like how they did with the Utican Chronicles and stuff like that, and with the original Persona, they go, Persona, that they go Persona. A, a show like something, something significant, a, a familiar character, and then it just says Persona like six. That's it. It does. You know not, what? You, you think that that would that would? Be you nuts. know what's interesting? <laughs> yeah. I know it's Square Enix, but Kingdom Hearts is 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 ram, ram, ramping up, and I would say that game is probably close to the end of its development mm-hmm. in some degree because you just see a lot more information about a lot more trailers mm-hmm. why wasn't that at the showcase for place i know we're mm-hmm. about to talk about that yeah. like there's a lot of things that i feel like should be in uh enough done to show some of the game mm-hmm. and none of that was there so i do think that the persona thing is definitely fair and that could happen you know I hope I'm wrong. I mm-hmm. hope they announce that Persona 3 comes up there. They're like, it is, it's in Game Pass day one, but we, we got one more thing for you. And they show Persona 6 connected straight to that. And that bitch says day one Game Pass 2. You know how crazy it would be if they did that? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah there's a, I think there's, there's an opportunity uh, for Xbox there. I don't think all is lost with Japanese support. There's a lot of smarter and much better Japanese publishers out there that are working with Xbox. Xbox doesn't lose out on Bandai and Co. Games. I think they're the best Japanese publisher, uh, you know, next to uh, Capcom and, um, you know, and next to Sega. They they have, you know, quality. They can, they're they consistent. Uh, they put out games often. Um, and they support the Xbox wherever they need to, whether it just needs to be releasing the game or whether it needs to be a, a, a Game Pass. Um, uh a, a release but they've shown and proven that they will release games uh uh for xbox and um and that's why like i said there's 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 other options there's better options out there for um uh, uh for xbox and other deals that they can make um and like i said the japanese market is, is, isn't that big sure they got some you know good games and whatnot but i think the way that you know publishers like Square Enix and 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 so off how they're acting, it's just not good for business. Um, 
at all. I hear you, and, and that's why I'm um, I'm completely for Microsoft and the acquisitions because mm-hmm. it's like if your competition has no problem sniping, you know, uh, board pieces off. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to take a couple pawns, a couple knights. Microsoft comes in and takes the whole damn board. Yeah. So it's like you can't negotiate with terrorists in the future because we took the whole land from you. You can't cut talk to Starfield and talk to Bethesda and then get Starfield or Elder Scrolls Six because we own the bitch. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's what they that, that's what they got uh, that's what they got to do. So, um, so let's let's talk about you know the elephant in the room, man. Um, Thirty five minutes in. The PlayStation Showcase, which had everybody's attention, um, it was highly anticipated. Uh, people were talking a whole lot on Twitter. Uh, you know, people were trying to predict, you know, Xbox fan bases, uh, like what we're gonna do after the showcase and how it's gonna be. It's gonna be so distressful. There were even other podcasts. I know some podcasts you're linked to. Um, uh, freaking, uh, I think it's a. Uh, uh sacred symbols where they were trying to explain why playstation would go first it's because it's strategic to get you know uh <laughs> battered xbox fans to switch over because they got a lot of content coming they thought it was like a strategic move uh which it should have been it should have been the first sign of worry actually but um place showcase happens attic you watched it right look how i just want to point out how excited you're getting I, talking. I'm not getting excited, dude. I'm not getting excited. Um, it was the first reaction live stream that when I lost uh, monetization rights, I didn't care. <laughs> um, so the showcase happens, man. It's, 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 I think it ran like an hour and three, hour and four minutes, maybe. I could, it, I could yeah, be wrong. I could have easily gotten yeah. what whatever spider-man was you take that off that hour and i could have got all that life back like yeah so your thoughts man like i i know you 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 you, you did a you did a couple videos on it I mean, i've been tweeting about it um i did a live reaction on it but just your you know your un you know filtered uninterrupted thoughts on the showcase and we have to talk about it. i know this is planet xbox but we have to talk about it because last week when we did the showcase, we were like, we were pretty much questioning like, all right, you know, do Xbox going to have to like show up because PlayStation is going to, you know, pretty much light fire to them before they can even go. That's what our, our pretty much mindset was last week. Now is after the show. What do you think? <laughs> Where does Xbox stand based off what we just got? I think Xbox has a lot to gain off this. I think that this is the first show that I've ever seen that I was generally, I'm generally concerned where PlayStation is at this point. And, you know, people sit there and they'll sit, they'll say, well, addict, you know, it doesn't matter what excuse you have. They, they missed last year. And obviously most likely they're not doing another showcase this year. They might from the bad backlash, but I'm willing to bet you that there wasn't going to be another showcase if this showcase would have got better received. I don't know who the hell watched this and said, yo, that's lit, send it out. If you look at this, you know how we should have known something was wrong, Smooth? Why? When they opened with Spider-Man. I mean, when When they closed with Spider-Man. Yeah. Because it's like... It's it's too late to realize something was wrong. Like I realized something was wrong, like... I want to say, I want to say, fifteen minutes into the showcase, I realized something was wrong, and because uh, at the fifteen twenty minute mark, they a couple of those games that usually show up at Xbox showcase that are just like fillers start to show up, and I'm like, yo, the show's only an hour. Like, what? Why are these here? But go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So it, it's like you know the fact that they didn't open up with with Spider Man should have been a huge red flag because i'm looking at this event and i'm like there's no way that they they go they it's either they put spider-man in the middle or they end with something else or they end with spider-man and to me the moment i i knew for a fact that spider-man was ended this bitch it it was it was already done you know no factions no what, what was it castlevania no metal gear was already shown 
<laughs> no Silent Hill. No Persona Six. What didn't they make like a bingo card and nothing on the bingo card was right? Yeah, like Bloodborne it's like, Two. They spent more time on showing hardware than showing Haven's game. They start. They opened up with. Mm-hmm. And w- what is that? What's with that? They showed Haven's game with no gameplay, really. Like mm-hmm. the only thing you know is it's like it's like a high simulator or some shit like yeah. that. Like why even show it? Yeah, and then apparently that Phantom Blade game started development last year. So that most so that likely, was a vertical slice. Then if that anything. was a vertical slice. Yeah. So we're not seeing that. Shit. No wonder, because I was about to say those camel cuts are impossible in, in game. You can, you're not you're not going to be able to. I was like, yeah, it looks good, but those cut. It, like, it doesn't make. I doesn't look like something I could play. I was like, it looked like a super zoomed in Sekiro. But go ahead, I'm sorry. You know what's funny is I was thinking just now. I was like, we should have got Jack moving here for this. Probably. Because it's like one of those things where we get like a, a you know prominent PlayStation dude, mm-hmm. and, and you know we bounce off of him. But it's just like this is the first time. If you look at the IOP before this the show, me and Cog was pushing back on King so much. King's like, it's gonna be lukewarm. It's gonna be trash. He's like, they're gonna show you Spider Man, and that's all. If you would have sat there and you went back and you said Attic is King Right, I said, hell no. Mm-hmm. How the hell was King Right? I feel like he got an insider. Someone's telling this man something. Because there is, in my mind, you skip a year and a half, mm-hmm. there's no way you don't have something fired to, to get our attention with. Right. How do you go in with the showcase when you could have renamed that bitch a state of play plus plus? Like it, 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 that that's essentially what this was. It was the showcase about the show. It was yeah. just a case. It, it, it's it's disappointing, man. And you know, they they did a good job on giving like they you you know how like in those those medieval medieval shows and movies where they had like you know the keep the castle door shut. Yeah. They go invade us. They let that bitch open and they went on vacation. Like like Microsoft literally can see the castle open they just gotta walk through it like there's no way in hell microsoft doesn't deliver over whatever the hell that was yeah yeah like i'd be very surprised now now there was a time once upon a time xbox did you know fell at a showcase the year place it was i think the first i think what year it was a year that places didn't have nothing and the Xbox was like the only one. I think that was 2019 or 20. Was it 2018 or 2018? Where it was like, yeah, like. Yeah, and probably 18. Where we were disappointed. Like, very no, it disappointed. Was 19. And they were like, PlayStation 1, and they didn't even have a show. Right? Remember that joke? Which, which is, is ridiculous. Yeah. How do you win and you don't show up? Yeah. Like, so I think, yeah, I, I, I this is very, very easy to beat. Very easy to beat. Um, Microsoft would have to go out of their way. Yeah, they really have to go out the way to like show. to have a, it, a, a, a show. And the thing is, it, it, hold on, real quick, real yep. quick. We know Hellblade's going to be there, and Avowed's going to be there, and Starfield's going to have it, a present. And we, and we know four. So we I know four games. All those together. Yeah, I consider all those together. Yeah. Like even the Starfield thing. Mm-hmm. As long as Avowed, Hellblade have a good showing at that conference, and Starfield has a good showing at its thing right after that. That's enough to beat that. Thing that we just saw yeah it, it, it's it's more than enough to be the game because the thing is all right they, they can literally win smooth off of the shit we already know as long as it comes out looks good <laughs> yeah we, we actually don't need surprises for them to win in the in, in the chance the, uh, the xbox literally even when they have on their mid shows there's usually a surprise right um so i'm gonna say this the place of showcase was absolute dog shit it was absolute dog shit. It was garbage to the worst degree. You should be offended. People should be offended that they, you know, did this. It's like, this is one of those showcases, like, where if I'm a fanboy and I'm hyping it up and that's what I got, like, I'm disappointed. Like, I'm apologizing see, to all the people. see we got J-Dub to react to it with. And you know yeah. what's funny? I thought that was going to blow up in King's face. I thought, oh, we're going to get J-Dub in here. The show's going to be lit. Mm-hmm. And they're going after J-Dub, man. They go, I mean, they're going after King. About midway through, you could look. J-Dub's like, did I really come in here for yeah. this? Like, it, like you could tell he wasn't trying to speak a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So the uh, it, it it was dog shit, and I and I once I knew I realized it was gonna be garbage. Um, when, like I said, they started showing the game, all the games that start looking like Abzu and all these cats. I was like, all right, a lot of these games aren't big. I was like, the first game was the Haven game, and what they are doing with PlayStation, what Digital Foundry just you know praised PlayStation for is like you know showing off like you know gameplay and being honest and stuff like that. The Haven thing was like, okay, they showed you full CGI. You can't be excited for it. You can't. It, all the CGI told us is that it's going to be a heist game. And, and the first thing I said, I was like, okay, they're going to have a first party heist game. Xbox already has something to compete with that, assuming it comes out fairly soon. And that would be contraband, right? So great. And they both, we both, that's the only thing we know about those two games. They're both heist type games and they both have been showed via CGI. CGI is the first, worst thing to use for new IP. CGI should be used exclusively for existing IPs and sequels. So there's that. So then they, uh, you know, they show off. Um, I honestly don't remember most of the games. I know uh, Bungie you showed say, up. It's like you pretty much remember what they opened with because yeah. it was a PlayStation game. You remember the Phantom Blade game because that looked pretty good. Yeah, Phantom Blade. Phantom um, Blade. I, which I you said that's the game too. Is Phantom Blade the game that's only a year in development? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, and, and then you look at Remedy, uh, Remedies, Alan, Alan Wake Two. I remember that. Yep. And, and then, then Spider Man. That's like the only thing I oh, remember. Oh no, I remember one thing: Crossfire for PlayStation VR Two. The oh, game they, they canceled the Xbox version. Yeah, hold on. Let, let me give you a little story. So we're <laughs> reacting to that, and so we're we're, we're react the we're reacting to that. And J Dub and Cog, Cog's reading the chat, and people are saying, "Oh, this is Crossfire," mm -hmm. and Cog is joking with them, saying, "Stop it, guys! This isn't Crossfire." And J Dub said. Oh my God! It really, it is Crossfire, mm -hmm. Cog. It is Crossfire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Crossfire, and I'm like, oh wow, this this made it to your Ooh. showcase. Cross How did PlayStation look at the reception Crossfire got and said, "We need that too"? Yeah, like, like think about how bad that is. You literally took someone's sloppy seconds that no one wanted and you used it. Yeah, like, is it Crossfire the lowest rated game on Xbox to date? <laughs> Oh, it's about to be on PlayStation. It's about slow trading game. <laughs> no, nah, it'll probably it'll probably write better on PlayStation because it'll be it'll be like VR. Yeah. So they'll have more experience when it comes to that. <laughs> but it's just like how, you, at the very least, you name it something else. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what I was like, crossfire. Like really? <laughs> like so so the thing is then they obviously they show off the little cloud gaming thing that they got going on. We get the Metal Gear um uh announcement we get the like some of these uh, announcements were good but they weren't good for a playstation showcase they would be good for a jeff Keeley showcase like oh we're gonna sequel to um freaking um dragon's dogma um and what's the other game they put a sequel to with the we were on a bike uh was it was it uh blade runner um, dogma look good. dragon's dogma look good Dragon Dama looks good and stuff like that, but like I said, but they the went hit is, harder. It would have hit harder if it got revealed there, but it didn't. Yeah, it, it got revealed earlier. And yeah, that's like one of our first official looks at yeah. it, and that's cool. But it's just like the reason this is an issue is because of the poor mm -hmm. expectations that Sony kept with this. You know, yeah. sure, ha in the past has play uh, has an Xbox messed up and Greeny messed up, and you know, promises gameplay at something, and when it happens, they don't show us much mm -hmm. gameplay. Yeah, that's happened. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time, Greeny get being on my nerves. He'd be like, "No, that ain't gonna be here. That ain't gonna be here." Yeah, like guys, reel it back. Like we, we what you guys are expecting, we're never gonna meet. So let's reel it back mm -hmm. a little bit. Sometimes he'll come up there and he'll say. There's nothing going to be at the video game awards and we get perfect dark trailer. Yeah. So it, I definitely understand when it comes to that. We needed that energy before the show happened. They said, look, we got a couple of our new studio showing stuff. They should have had like people like St. Monica, Naughty Dog, Naughty Dog mm -hmm. should have made an announcement. Factions won't be at this event. Mm -hmm. They should, if they would have, if they would have railed people's expectations back, they wouldn't have gotten completely roasted. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't the X PlayStation showcase day. It was everyone on the internet roast PlayStation Day. Yeah. The problem with the also the showcase itself is that 
it, there was so much ex expectation on it because they went almost two years without a showcase. So, and the immediate blowback, it's like, okay, great. When, and I, and I definitely knew it was game over when, all right, the thing that they're going to show right before the uh, Spider-Man, which closed the show was the GT trailer. I'm like, really? That's in your showcase. You, you felt, you found time. For I was the movie. actually thinking, I was actually thinking about, I thought the Xbox did that a couple years ago. Uh, it was a Kojima. Remember there was a show where Kojima came out and mm -hmm. he introduced something. And then he said, now we're going to go ahead. I'm going to show you my friend's movie. Yeah, he did that at the remember, Game Awards. Yeah, it was the Game Awards. Yeah. And Carl's like, no, nah, man, I, I've never seen that. Like, no platform holder has came up there mm -hmm. and said, that gave me mad 2013 vibes. This is about movies, TV shows. Mm -hmm. It's not about games anymore. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 you know, I want to point out, and I know people aren't going to agree. You know, we said multiple times Xbox having all these issues because they had so many of these games midway through development when the pandemic started. They, I was told personally that um, that Ninja Theory lost like six months of, of progress on Hellblade because what is the bulk of Ninja Theory? Mocap. Mm -hmm. What's the one thing you couldn't do during the pandemic for a while? Mocap. Have that many people to do mocap. Yeah. So that was shut down. And then, uh, you know, I think what happened is PlayStation had more games on the end of the development cycle, mm -hmm. and they still got hit with it. Mm -hmm. We had Last of Us got delayed, Return had mad issues, Horizon Forbidden West had mad issues. Like, these games clearly weren't completely done when they launched, and you had Last of Us got delayed indefinitely until they figured out what they were going to do with it. So it's just like, look, that happened, but Xbox had a lot of games, like, midway through development that got delayed six months to a year. Mm -hmm. But what we didn't notice at that time, because PlayStation had enough games at the end of the development cycle, that their games that just went into development cycle or probably main production, they were screwed. So I think that's why you're not seeing these. I think PlayStation probably got together like six months ago. Is Naughty Dog's thing writing? No. Okay. Is St. Monica Red? No, okay. You know, I don't know if they're working on another one besides Ragnarok. Okay, what, what, what about Ghost of Tsushima 2? What's that? Oh, that's not ready either. Okay. Well, we got to show something this year. We can't just not be there. Imagine if they... Look, you know what would have been worse? Them not doing anything this year. True. We might roast them, but at least people have that Spider-Man 2 thought process. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Imagine they just didn't have a showcase. What do you think that would have been better? You think no, I mean maybe well, they yeah. should have just skipped the they, whole thing. Yeah. I think they should have just did a state of play with, with yeah, Spider-Man yeah, and say, look, we got right now we, we have our studios hard in development. We'll see you later this year or early next year for a, mm -hmm. a showcase and showing more what our people are making. But I think PlayStation knows that right now, to me. This is a more of a reactionary thing. Mm -hmm. This is, we know a little bit of what Xbox is about to show next month. And we need something in the news now. Well, that's shooting yourself in the foot. I think we all agreed they could have just done a Spider-Man State of Play. I feel like, like I said, this was dominated by like Square Enix games. They have this fake uh, like Splatoon-like game. I think that's an exclusive um for what reason i don't know why that's that game's gonna flop it's gonna fail if it's if it remains an exclusive but um they're the spider-man showing it's like the thing is they're closing with a game that we pretty much know for sure was coming so it couldn't do anything to excite us and the thing is i wasn't even a fan of the showing of spider-man i didn't like their the the embrace venom suit i wasn't a fan of how it looked I uh, thought Spider-Man looked amazing. You thought it looked amazing. I gotta rewatch it. I thought it looked rough, um, in my opinion. Um, but the thing is, is that there's nothing they can do with Spider-Man that tells me that's gonna be like, oh my god, it's gonna be the greatest. I know what to expect. We've done played Spider-Man 2018. We've done played Miles so Morales. So there's nothing's going to change from so, that. So at best, it can only look be better by a tad. Yeah, what what I saw it definitely looked look more Spider-Man 18. I feel like. There's probably going to be a little bit more set pieces in this. Yeah, and that was a crazy set piece they had in, in that in that trailer, or oh, with well, that gameplay segment.
I think at the end of the day, Smooth, this just shows that it's like PlayStation, regardless if it was COVID, regardless if they did mm-hmm. this because of what Xbox is doing, because all we were doing is assuming at this point. Yeah. All They have done one thing, and we, we can all agree, I'm pretty sure. Yes. They've set the bar so low that Microsoft don't even got to bend down. Now, like they could just step wide well, I over. To talk to you about in regards to showcase because one one of the immediate blowbacks to the showcase was that PlayStation was holding back. What are they holding back for at this time? They already got the CMA to block the deal. So what is there to hold back? Why do they need if if, if PlayStation wanted to hold back and look weak into the eyes of the worldwide regulators, is a, a showcase isn't going to change that. Them withholding PlayStation stock. Yeah, I, it, I feel like that's that. Maybe they yeah. had stuff that they they're holding close to the chest for other reasons, but I don't think they held anything back. Uh, yeah, I think the stuff here, unless they're talking about they held stuff back because of time restraints, not being able to get stuff ready for the show. Yeah, that's more of a possibility than them holding. They haven't been here for a year and a half. They have pretty much essentially did all they can when it comes to blocking this deal with Activision. What is there to hold back? You mean to tell me you're going to wait a year and a half and you're going to come back with holded back material? Yeah. Yeah. Doubtful. Like, and, then, and then we get information on The Last of Us that that's been <laughs> drastically reduced on factions. No, it's not they're holding back. Their studios are having meltdowns right now. Yeah. Now, this is also, remember two weeks ago, uh, they had, can't, didn't they shut down a studio? And then the, one of the studios that they heavily invested in that looked for deviation games, their project has been scaled and is on rumor to be uh, canceled. Um, a lot of their, they're attacking a lot of service-based games right now. Um, and things aren't going pretty at PlayStation. A lot of the stuff that's been happening at PlayStation went back in 20, remember we were getting reports of the initiative, reports at uh, Playground and reports at, uh, um you know undead labs and all this other stuff and everything every all xbox bad management development hell all their stuff is going through development hell and it's like yo now some of the same exact stuff is going on with these playstation studios and even to the point it's impacting naughty dog the great naughty dog who who's being advised by bungie like there's one thing i don't like about that like i'm not saying that bungie don't know what they're doing but I'm saying if you look at you look at Destiny, mm-hmm. you know, it's got had its up and downs. Bungie's not a hundred percent guaranteed on what they do and what they consult on. I think the game that no I think they probably looked at Naughty Dog, they looked at the game like, okay, the game's fun. Mm. And you might keep people in there, but they don't want just BG, uh, you know, Jack Move, Gamer twenty three coming back. They want then three plus another fifty. And I think their mindset's like, do we want to be a Halo Infinite where we have a solid foundation for a game, mm-hmm. but we don't have a good roadmap and you're going to end up losing the momentum? That's fair. That's fair. That's, uh, that's, um, I don't know, man. That's, they're, they're in a tight spot. And it's cool. I think, it, I, I don't, I think it's interesting for the simple fact that um, these were all been like familiar things that um, that uh, Xbox has been through, and it's been well documented, well memed, and videos is done. And I think right now, at this very moment, and I know it's, I know it's three years into the console sales cycle and stuff like that, but PlayStation is putting Xbox in the position to kind of because it, it's crazy if what you said is true. Like, hey. PlayStation is now feeling the effects of the COVID. Xbox got is just getting over the effects of the COVID. It would just make tied. sense, though. <laughs> it would make sense because if you look at something like this, like one thing is is interesting. Even if it is the COVID effect, they've had no problem doing you know vertical slices in mm-hmm. the past. Yeah. So it's like, why didn't you do that? Like, yeah. Why didn't you just have a, a you know a a P and G? Because you did that with God of War Ragnarok. You announced that in, like, what, three years ago? And mm-hmm. it came out two years after that? Mm-hmm. Like, to me, is there a bigger issue here? Like, is their game so... And then we we don't know how much of a shift they've done for games as a service. Yeah. Has some of these studios been helping the games as a service studios and it's been impacting their own game? Because to me, if you have no problem in the past coming out there and announcing games three, four, five years in advance... Why didn't you do that here? Yeah. 
unless they got so much backlash back then that they kind of changed things up. And then it might be, look, this you're seeing the Jim Ryan era of PlayStation. Yeah. You know, the Sean Layton thing, he probably got a lot of credit for what Sean Layton did. Because when you set up these type of deals and set up these type of games and, you know, green light these games, it's years of preparation. We could have been seeing a lot of the PlayStation 4 success mm -hmm. and Sean Layton's success carry over to the PS5. And now you're starting to see Jim Ryan's leadership and what he's been doing the past couple of years. Yeah. Ab 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 absolutely. Um, and it looks like he is pushing towards a games as a service PlayStation era. Which... If well, that's exact, <laughs> that's crazy. He's doing the one thing that the PlayStation the family yeah, don't, don't want. want that, that that's not what they want. They and want the how bad do you think it's going to be if a couple of these are mass successful? Like maybe not Fortnite level, but like Apex Legends yeah. level where they make a lot of money. And, and, and to me, if you start making money on stuff like that, I'm very curious that they don't chase the carrot on the stick. Okay. You know, God of War makes us X amount of money. They do good. But this made us what God of War made every quarter for the past year. <laughs> so we want to we want to chase the carrot on a stick to the left. And we want to take some of these people that are working on God of War and have them work on X game as a service over here, X's game service over there. I'm not saying PlayStation would ever get in that direction, but it's hard to pass up that, that games as a service successful type of money. Yeah. Look at... Look at Elden Ring. A lot of the fans that love those type of games are very concerned that since they've had their first taste of mad commercial success, because there's a difference between making really good money and make that, oh, shit money. <laughs> that could change the way that the executives in your company are running. Yeah. Oh, we just got a big-ass fat sh bonus check. What can we do to, to, to mimic that and get that again? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're right. You're right. So, I mean, PlayStation, like what, what happens that pretty much changed the, the pretty much the output of what PlayStation can do. Um, and it and can get worse if those games are successful. Yeah. And it, and it can get worse because my thing is if, if one too many, if one or two of them are successful, then it's like, okay, well, we can, we could try to make, you know, five or six of them. Right. And that five or six, it becomes, all right. So whereas instead of getting like a, another ghost or, Last of Us or whatever, it's, it's, or it's new another, IP. a new You'll IP. You'll probably still get the God of Wars, the Ghost yeah. of Tsushima's, yeah. but I'm very worried on the future of PlayStation when it comes to investing in new IPs, investing in small AA titles, you know, just taking more chances when they're like, look, why, we don't need to take chances. We got mm -hmm. we got Ghost of Tsushima live service over here making a making billion dollars a year. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I just got a text message. My bad. Um, I think in that case for Xbox, this is uh, they're in an interesting position, right? Um, the Xbox has already, you know, responded to PlayStation's showcase. They've uh, they've <laughs> shared a tweet that featured all of the games that were announced at PlayStation that are coming to Xbox. And all the biggest games not named Spider-Man are coming to Xbox. That was from that showcase. So that was very, it was a very, uh, an appreciated move by Xbox. Because everybody, you know, you know, Xbox gets, you know, criticized for being kumbaya with PlayStation. And even after the shade, you know, the Phil Spencer reached out to PlayStation like, job. hey, you know, you know, a good show, da 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 you know what I mean? And then. You, you know, they were secretly popping yeah, the bottles over there. They like, like, yeah, even we got Xbox, this. Xbox. The Xbox Twitter account was like, yo, that showcase was nice, but all these games are on our shit too. Yeah. They, we got, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, they pretty much, all right, so these are the show, the games that I showed up on our showcase. Right? So I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to one up you, right? The Xbox Game Showcase, obviously, their exclusive is going to be a big deal to us because I think they're exclusive. Their games are going to show up very well. The ones that we're waiting for. I think they're going to show up. We know Hellblade is going to be there. We know Avowed is going to be there. Um, Starfield is going to have his own showcase. Forza is going to be there. It's already been confirmed. So anything outside of that is going to be a surprise. They're going to show up well. Xbox over the past couple of years has been careful with their third party showings. And they've showed a lot of great third party games. And usually with the third party games that they do show, they're usually coming to Game Pass. So 
I I on the strong belief that the better game that they will even show the better third party games. So I think overall Xbox will have the better uh, they're going to have the better showcase regardless, but they're also going to have the better first party game showing and a better third party game showing. Shortly after this showcase uh, for PlayStation, uh, Aaron Greenberg and the Xbox team tweeted out that uh, they're uh, taking their showcase to movie theaters. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in LA too. And, so. and you're going to be in LA um, for that, so I'm definitely looking for that. So their showcase, you gotta, uh, you got to get the tickets. Tickets are free. Um, they're going to be in theaters. That's about, I don't recall Xbox ever doing the, the showcase at the They've theaters. They've done it before, they, not, done, to this period, not to this degree. Not PlayStation this has done the theaters to this degree multiple times uh, most of the time xbox when they though they'll, they'll rent out a couple of theaters yeah during e3 time and let you see the showcase there yeah like it was in like multiple cities and stuff like give me a quick second go ahead <laughs> yeah so it's just like when it comes to this i, I think xbox they get they they definitely got you know what smooth's supposed to put on there they got a layup are they gonna lay up it depends on what the quality of the games are depends on what we see depends on how they look you can have the greatest show, but if you don't have the correct way of showing the games, it's going to be irrelevant. I think that, you know, Hellblade's probably going to look good. I think Avowed's going to look good. You know, Starfield comes after that. Hopefully that will look pretty good. We got, you know, mystery stuff like Fable. Fable might show up there. I'm kind of curious if Fable shows up anyway. You know, if they if they see this type of event, part of me feels like Fable's not needed. But I think I think... I don't want Microsoft to just do what's safe. I want them to go for the jugular. I want them to, for once, make me feel like they want to compete. I want them to show the fable. I want them to show the perfect dark. Now, obviously, a lot of these games isn't realistic. We're probably not going to see fable or perfect dark. We might see fable. Perfect dark's most likely not going to be there. But I do think Microsoft's got a chance, man. I yeah. think they got a really good chance. And it's like I said, smooth. I don't want them to just do enough to beat PlayStation. I want them to go over there and PlayStation standing up and they just sit there for a solid 10 minutes, just punch them over and over again. It's like, it's like your fan base and you've been beating my ass for all these years. <laughs> like, this is the perfect time. I've never seen a better time for Xbox to not only show up, but to be like, we take him back these streets. Yeah. Now, obviously, they're going to need more than a showcase. Mm -hmm. Starf is going to have to come out. It's going to have to write well. Avowed's going to have to come. It's going to have to write well. The stuff they show is going to actually have to be good. Redfall did a huge hit on the brand, and they got to sto start showing consistency in the games that come out and that high quality over and over again. Yeah, I agree with you. I think you not only want to beat PlayStation, but you want to do something I that you know Sacred Symbol said. Uh, still the battered, hurt PlayStation fan, uh, fans who are now hurt. Because the thing is, from that showcase, the only thing I learned is that Spider-Man is coming out in the fall, which they didn't give us a particular date for. It's coming out in the fall, which, um, fine. I think, other than that, there was no other games at the showcase where I was like, all right, this is definitive, and they got dates. And I, there's nothing from that showcase. I'll, and I'm not a, the biggest Metal Gear fan. That I, I, that I said, hey, I'm buying this game day one. There's nothing in that showcase outside of Spider-Man. Spider-Man is obviously the go-to, but like, but there's nothing else in that showcase. Like, you know, I'm not a fan of Final Fantasy. You know how I feel about Square Enix. I'm not buying that game. I'm not playing that shitty game. Um, and where they showed Final Fantasy 16, to be honest yeah. with you. We saw a whole state of play dedicated to that. Yeah, day and they, 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 had, they, next they bothered showing Street Fighter, and that game comes out next week. <laughs> like yeah it, it, they it kind of makes me think that they threw that show together last minute yeah like it really does like obviously last minute is probably a couple months but it's just like maybe they they decide they maybe they weren't going to do anything to the last minute mm -hmm. and when they decide they're going to do something wasn't enough time for their internal studios to realistically give something that would actually be shown at this event correct I think um, so. Xbox obviously has to come big with their the, the games that we're gonna see. They're, they're I think they're gonna have three or four pillars, right? Their pillars are all right. S S Starfield, which is their next major release. Um, Forza is either coming before or after uh, Starfield, um, and then you know Hellblade Two, which we're all just believe it's gonna be there. 
and you know avowed which we think is sometime early next year to the point where they can actually put like a date or a date window uh with the trailer right that's four pillars that's got to hold uh, the showcase together and um in those four pillow uh pillars have to all be coming soon and it ought to look good so i you know if hellblade's there not only is the gameplay we're not gonna we can't have those you know gameplay where she's just running and talking or yeah, walking it's gotta show legit it's gotta combat. show combat that they gotta solve the one question that we all have you know what's crazy smooth yeah they could as bad as that playstation show was they they can completely drop the ball with a vowed hellblade and as long as starfield looks good people will be like at least i get to play starfield yeah. like but it's sad that that's how bad things are right now yeah. and, and you know if you would ask me a week ago i would have said there's zero percent chance that show that showcase wouldn't have done nothing like i i was convinced they were about to come out there and they went they're about to knock out xbox and yeah. win before the win actually happened yeah but i feel like they just started at a fire and you know when when's gonna come from the fire so <laughs> No, uh, so Hellblade gameplay, impressive combat gameplay with comfort confirming that it's coming out this year. Uh, once if it comes out the early next year, like February, I, I guess uh, you know, I think that would take that would take a little wind out of the cell, but as long as they saw an early date next year and they felt confident mm -hmm. in the stuff they showed at this event, people yeah. would get still hyped. Yeah, yeah, if it comes out next year, it's fine. Uh, um, fine, but I think. We'll we'll see we'll see, but um, Hellblade um, Hellblade um two like it shows well we get a release date and it's enough to be like all right you know this is the Xbox got something avowed also they it, it shows up even if we don't get a date we get a window, but we see gameplay and it looks great. No, Forza already knows it's gonna look great, and we know it's gonna come out sometime in October. Starfield's got to do what it's got to do. It's got to be that classic presentation. Town, however, it, it, what Starfield has to be, it can't. It has to be that classic Bethesda presentation where all the Bethesda fans have to be, and then Elder Scrolls fans and Fall fans have to be um, impressed. And um, and if that happens. Uh, we're good. And then all the other games that they announced, you know, uh, do well. And then the surprises, if the surprises hit with the with with a bang where we're like, there's a true like surprise. So right now, I feel like I had no surprise or shock value from the place showcase from anything. Parties, Xbox don't need a surprise. Value. But the thing is, but if they still manage to do that, I think like the conversation changes. The conversation uh uh, changes and it is going to is going to be good uh, for Xbox. They have to capitalize. They have to have a good showcase. I have no doubt they'll beat whatever PlayStation is done. But my thing is, are they going to go over and beyond just beating PlayStation? Will they, you know, just have a, a great showcase and make people want to buy into Xbox or buy into Xbox Game Pass? So. I feel you. They, they definitely need like that's why I said like I don't want them just to come up there and do the the bare minimum they feel is necessary to, you know, one up PlayStation here. I want to come here with the knockout mm -hmm. punches. I want to come here at the juggler. I want them to, I want to feel like Xbox is in this to compete. Like what they're not going to hold stuff. Like, I don't want none of that stuff. I want no articles afterwards saying Xbox held stuff back. I want them to come in there with the intent to kill. I want them to come in there and make sure that by the end of that showcase, people know for a fact that Xbox is taking this gaming thing seriously and they're going to do what they have to do to win. That's what I personally want. Are we going to get that? It's up in the air. You know, we've seen in the past, Microsoft has dropped the ball when it comes to showcases. I, I do feel a little different energy this time. I do feel like they, they are taking this a little bit serious now. The fact that Xbox came out was being a little messy too is a pretty good sign for me because it feels like it feels like a little confidence there. It's just like we 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 need to see more from Xbox, and I, I feel like we will. You know, I hope I'm not. I hope I'm I'm right. I do, but at the end of the day, we we don't know what's gonna happen, and I think it's just one of those things where it's like they're either gonna show up and do what they're supposed to, or they're not gonna show up. Which side but, are you leaning on? I, th I think they're going to show up. I do. Okay. You know, I'm kind of curious if they're going to have any shock value in mm. that conference. 
you know, it, it, to me, it's like, what, an hour and a half? Yep. And then the Starfield showcase is 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Now, next week, we're going to do our our Xbox prediction show. I think that's the... We'll probably record that on the 2nd. Does mm-hmm. that sound fine to you? Next Friday? Yeah. Yep, we'll Try to quick. get it up on Friday so people have the whole weekend to listen to it on uh, Patreon? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, might try to get someone in there with us. I don't know. I, I'll reach out to some people. I, I think... I'm just curious if taking the time they need to properly show Avowed, Hellblade, if they do that correctly, and show, like, you know, obviously there's going to be indies here to some degree. If there's going to be enough time to captivate people with, like, third-party stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, hey, the balls in the air caught the court. I feel like, you know, the failure of the places showcases have given Xbox huge momentum. Um, all the momentum, they put them in a the driver's seat. All Xbox has to do is execute. Let's just hope to God they don't wreck. Uh, I mean, I, my thing is, I didn't think it was possible for PlayStation to wreck. They got a, at, right now, PlayStation has a decent amount of studios. They're like neck and neck in, in dev count, right? At that, until the Activision deal closed and Xbox will be up again. I think again. the problem is a lot of the PlayStation devs that they've been buying, mm-hmm. they're not making the games that we that we personally want from yeah. them. They're making games as a service mm-hmm. some of them are support studios they mm-hmm. bought nixes to make pc ports yeah. like microsoft generally is buying studios that could create value to their brand it, the way we would want it now obviously nixus gives games to pc you mm-hmm. know some of these games as a service might take off but i would say that a core of the community that we're in mm-hmm. they don't care about none of these games so it does look like they're buying studios but at the end of the day these studios are gonna make the games that we want yeah I mean, the crazy thing is about Xbox is like the reason why it leaves a lot of room for hope and stuff like that is like there's there's a handful of studios from their previous acquisition spree that hasn't shown anything yet. And then there's a handful of studios from the, the Zenimax deal that haven't shown anything yet. So machine games still haven't formally shown anything. Id software. Still Indiana Jones might shown. be there. That'd yeah, be it's like they still have there's they still got a lot of studios that haven't formally shown or announced anything that are actually pretty due for something. Um, and so that's where it, there, you have that factor of like, yo, there's there's potential to be a, you know, a surprise, you know, and, and, we, and we'll talk about it, of course, on the next week's show when we're trying to, you know, formulate our predictions of what's going to happen. Um, but we know you know, uh, like even with like the four pillars that are there that, that are confirmed to be there, or at least have like some sort of you know presence, I think they're gonna show big. Um, and hey, who knows, man? But uh, as far as there was one more thing I wanted to the, to bring up, uh, I think Idol Sloth, or am I saying his name right? He had tweeted out. Uh, there's a YouTuber, I think from you know a different country he speaks a different language um he posted that he got an information that xbox has two surprises that are going to put our jaws on the ground yeah we, we were told that about playstation the only that, thing i'm going to say about that is you know we, we could take that information and we can put it in the the equation but don't let that be the equation don't let mm-hmm. that hype you guys up you know Take that with a big ass grain of salt that at any time could be dismissed like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's hard to take a lot of this stuff. But the thing is, so far, nothing realistically, I don't think anything realistically for Xbox is leaked. You know what I mean? The most noteworthy thing of PlayStation that leaked or people got right was the Metal Gear thing. Um that was a third party thing. It wasn't there. Story. Yeah, and it was in this third party. People were wondering if it was going to be exclusive, and it's not even even a timed exclusive. Were we talking about will it be timed exclusive? It was not even a timed exclusive. Oh, look! Look what I got just just got in the mail. Hold the line. I need a King David hold the line shirt. I need one. I need one. I need one. That that's actually hold the line. I want to wear that for the uh, the showcase. <laughs> Yeah, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'll have soft send you one. Oh man, wow. Um, yeah, man, but we're at pretty much the a uh, telling of the show. Um, guys, uh, we thank you guys for you know watching us. 
another episode in episode two playing xbox podcast uh you can please submit your questions on patreon i don't know how beach is going to do it so i don't know if you do it on and maybe in the comment section under the post um i i think he just you know he's on vacation and stuff so you know forgive uh the podcast for not posting mm-hmm. anything for questions but this is a new thing you know this is the first kind of like step when it comes to putting stuff on the weapon world patreon especially bg's channel uh so we'll, we'll get it right we'll definitely you know i, I saw all the input in the in the comment section you know there's yeah. a lot of good input. The one thing i want to really briefly talk about it's like adding anyone to the panel yeah well, that's one of the reasons that like previous stuff didn't work out like when you keep adding people or you know even just a third person we have to rotate around a third person mm-hmm. schedule i think it's easier just to invite a third guest on when we feel like we need a third opinion on mm-hmm. something than it is to rotate our life around a third person absolutely Absolutely. Um, so the pan and I, I made a comment about potentially at I, again, we got to see what happens. But it is it is true when the more people you bring in, the the difficult it brings because everybody got to work around the same schedule. We all got to you know. Plus, for the most part, we want to keep this like an hour, hour and a half. Hour you had a third person. That's a two hour show. Yeah. every week, guaranteed. Yo, each person is worth at least uh, thirty minutes. Oh. And that's if we don't find someone that's as dominant as we are talking. Yeah. It might be longer than that. You know, Cognito and and and, and Maddie mm-hmm. somehow go for like three and a half hours because they're very dominant conversate say uh, conversators. Yeah. So I don't know, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, man. Um, but definitely we appreciate you guys uh, coming through, supporting the podcast, supporting Weapon Wheel podcast, supporting the Patreon, and supporting uh, uh, my move, to, uh, the the move to bring Planet Xbox to uh, Weapon Wheel Network. Uh, I'm going to yeah, continue you guys to do the show. Big last week. Yeah, like so, I want to say, you guys showed up big. Um, I we will be doing a big show tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. You know, we're having Colin Moriarty on tomorrow. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how his yeah. conversation goes with that. Uh, but, you know, definitely check that out. You know, my personal YouTube channel, check that out. I've been putting a lot more content on there. I've been growing uh, pretty decently. Mm-hmm. And follow me on Twitter, Lord Added to ILP. But I'm sure a lot of the people, especially in this Patreon, uh, you know, you, some of you probably already follow me. But even though, you know, what's funny, Smooth, is I always get, like, associated with Kid Smooth thing. It's like, oh, because Kids Movie be going crazy on Twitter, that means I had to go crazy on Twitter. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why people do that, but like, you know, uh, Attic is, Attic is clearly uh, uh, is more sensible to me when it comes to my opinions. Like I said, he likes uh, Square Enix. I, I absolutely hate Square Enix. Like, I, I could care less if they shut down tomorrow. But um, you guys, great. Attic, thank you again. Great show. Next week is going to be lit. Let's see who we got coming in next week for this uh, prediction show. I'll let you hold hold the line uh, for that one. But other than that, guys, make sure you guys subscribe uh, to Weapon Will. Uh, go buy a Hold the Line shirt. The Hold the Line shirt. Support the Patreon. Subscribe to my channel. I'll be having content on the channel. I'm going to go get a haircut so I can actually do some decent videos, right? So, Yeah, someone called me homeless, so I put on a beanie this week. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's mean. But other than that, guys, as always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace.